The battle for the soul of Imo State is slowly gathering momentum and is expected to reach a crescendo on Saturday when all the candidates contesting the election will test their popularity. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, 17 candidates on the platforms of different political parties are seeking to govern Imo. However, only four are viewed as the major contenders for the seat. Opus Odima, the incumbent governor and flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, APC, is seeking a second term, making him the candidate to beat. Authors are Samuel Anyao of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Arthur Nachonu of the Labour Party, LP, and Lincoln Ogunwe of the Action Alliance, AA. Joining us live is Declan Emelumba, Commissioner for Information, Emo State. Commissioner, good to have you on Plus Politics. Good to have you on Plus Politics. Good morning. What is the development now in Emo, in the backdrop of uh, politicking on the one hand and uh, the contention with NLC on the other hand? Is Emo working or is Emo working or has Emo uh, come to a gridlock of a sort? Hello? I, can you hear me very well? Hello? I can hear you. What is the speech I said, I said, in the backdrop of NLC's uh, threat, and the call for strike is emo still working? I'm pretty well. I can tell you that uh, emo is not big. If we come to emo state, we find that everybody is going about his business, life is problem. And then the NLC is not being felt anymore. The workers have been on their duty post, nobody is observing it. The only thing which is uh, very unfortunate is uh, the uh, outage of power, uh, which uh, is, is really unfortunate. That's the only thing that is... And I am very confident that uh, it will be too long we will find a way out of it. What's the... Emo state government in any way, shape, or form involved in the physical abuse of the NLC president, the alleged involvement of the Emo state? No, we, yeah, you know, we have issued a statement on the matter. The government condemned the attack, and uh, definitely the government uh, could not have been in any way, any way wrong. Anybody who is in the most state will tell you that that thing was almost a self inflicted uh, So it is your belief that it was more a political or partisan machination to embarrass the Imo State government? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I said, is it your belief, or can one deduce from what you said that it was almost uh, a partisan machination to embarrass the Imo State government? I didn't hear the question. Okay, I said, can one deduce from your earlier remarks that it was a Partisan machination to embarrass the Imo state government. Yeah, I was, I was just, I hadn't actually landed before the commission. I was, I was going to say first and foremost that, you know, um, from the JRGRO, it's from Imo state. The first thing he did on assuming uh, uh, the mantle of NLC uh, presidency was to begin to fight his state, which is very, very, un uh, it's unheard of. No NLC uh, president has done that before. Uh, starting off by fight, picking a fight with their state. But in the process, it caused a champ division. 
in, in the local NSC in Imo State. So it was that division that played out, you know, uh, what happened. But having said that, we also are uh, aware that even he himself, the uh, president of NSC, Dragero, does not like the fact that he's a member of the Labour Party. Uh, so he, it is also possible that he uh, came out, came, had a partisan objective. In fact, yesterday, I was listening, I was watching Channel Television, and one equi- who is the head of the international relations in NLC came out openly on Channel Television to say that the objective of NLC was to score through the election in Imo State. So they, they, their plan, which 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 fits well with the opposition, who want the elections coming because they know they will lose. So NLC is being used as a willing tool to score through the election, and they're not even they're not denying it. They are, they are brazenly saying it openly on television. I mean yesterday on, on uh, channel. So there is no doubt that the thing has a partisan uh, uh, coloration. Yes. situation in Imo, prior to even electioneering campaigns, has been so uh, dire and a bit, uh, a bit frenzied. Now that the electioneering campaigns are going on, do you, do you think that uh, voters will come out on Saturday? Whether the voters will come out on Saturday? Whether, do you think that in the backdrop of the security scenario in Imo, the voters, voters, the electors, if they will come out on Saturday? In the backdrop of the security situation? I, I didn't quite get it. Did you say in the backdrop of the security situation? I said in the backdrop of the security situation that preceded the electioneering campaigns. Eh? I said in the backdrop of the security situation okay. or scenario that preceded the electioneering campaigns. Yeah, well, uh, I think I, I get it now. In the backdrop of security situation, I, I can tell you clearly that there is nothing like backdrop of security situation. The security situation in the state has uh, very reasonably uh, 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 come down. Through the spirited efforts of His uh, Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Senator uh, Hobo Zaduma, the security situation has long been gone down. And uh, yeah, I remember, I'm sure maybe we are one of the, the uh, editors who came for the Guild of Editors Conference uh, um, sometime this year. And after the November 1, so less than a year, Guild of Editors have held their conference in over, you know, uh, two times. And, uh, and I think you can attest, if you are one of them, to the fact that the, when the period they were here, on the two occasions, more than three, four days, there was no security breach. And the other people have been coming and going. So the security situation is firmly under control. And moreover, and moreover, and more importantly, the uh, security agencies are well prepared for the election. So they don't foresee any security breach. Uh, I think the, the, the pulling uh, area should be well uh, secured by security agencies. And voters have been told time and, and time again that they should come out, exercise their franchise, and nobody will fear no molestation. I can assure you that the more people are eagerly waiting for Saturday to come and vote in the uh, Tehoe Buzodima as the governor of the state to continue his second tenure. Why, why would you think, just telling, telling uh, emo lights now, why would you think they should vote for your principal again? Why should they re-elect him? Why did you re-elect my governor? Yes, that's the question. Well, I, well I, he, he has done tremendously well. When, when, uh, when he came in, in 2020, there was practically no more trouble road in the whole of Imo State, from Owele to the rural areas. Today, the story is different. Anybody who, who, who knew what Imo was in 2020 and knows, knows what it is today will tell you that in terms of road infrastructure, he has done tremendously well. When he came in, most of our youth, both educated and non-educated, were roaming the streets in search of non-existent uh, jobs. 
today he has taken off not less than 80,000 of such shoes off the streets through different skill acquisitions, particularly the skill more skill of the more project, through which he empowers students with digital skills. And these people are now in a position to be self employed and even employ other people or get better employment. So the youth uh, unemployment has been very, very uh, drastically reduced. He has been able to revamp the health sector. He has been able to revamp the education sector. He has this mission of dredging uh, the right river to the Atlantic Ocean, which has taken off, uh, and which, when completed, will drastically change the economic landscape of Vimo State. He has paid workers regularly, promptly, as a when you, in addition to paying the garden money. Workers of Vimo State were not, uh, so they were denied promotion for the past 12 years. He came and cleared that backlog and promoted all of them. And today, they are very happy. He has promoted, he has paid pensioners regularly, as I would do. That's why the pensioners have adopted him, workers have adopted him. And so many youths have adopted it. So uh, I think there is every reason for, to vote for him so that he can continue with his good work. Honorable Commissioner, if he, has, if he has paid workers that consistently, how come he's having this imbroglio or furore with the NLC, uh, uh, which, for which one of the reasons they have enumerated is the fact that he has, he has not paid some workers and has deliberately has deliberately declared some workers as ghost workers. Well, my brother, that is, that is not true. Because the, the truth is that the local affiliates of the uh, I mean, union, uh, union that are affiliated to the NLC in the name of the have continuously told you that the governor is not owing us. If anything, he is paying us 30% salary. I mean, that is one salary. He has promoted us. That they have no problem. But he is the person insisting that he's owing you. Say, I mean, if he says, no, he will suspend the person from the union. So he has an agenda. That is the truth of the matter. And it is no he is. The question he asks himself is, granted we can consider that he was owing you salary. And I want to repeat myself, granted we can consider that he was owing you salary. Is he that he's owing salary? I don't want to mention the states, but I know I know some states that they are all in, in the open. They are all inside. Why has NLC not gone there? So, again, uh, has an agenda in Imo State. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, so, all that is saying, they are not true. The government has said, bring the names of these people that you say we are owing. And he's not sitting down today, we say another thing. Tomorrow, we say salary. The next day, we say labor uh, uh, um, on unfair on, on labor practices. Uh, he's um, intimidating worker. I don't know. So, it's just that he has an agenda. He has a clear agenda. And that agenda is political. That is why he doesn't even care. He wants to, he's abusing his position as NFC president to, to, to visit Mayhem uh, in, in his state. I cause complete uh, hardship for the people of Imo. If you say he's writing for workers, why is he suffering them? Why is he taking their life? Okay. Because he's doing I'm everything. Sure. It is so much. Uh, like I told you, the aim is to is see whether the election will not hold or whether they will force people of frustration to say they will vote. It's good fire yeah? because they're not, they are not. Our hands are clean. This government means well for Imo people. And all of these plans would definitely uh, uh, not not be, be actualized. There is so much, in so much as the logic of your explanation is solid, at least to a, a non-partisan person, uh, one would also want to ask: How would you then square the fact that Imo is the only state where the NLC is factionalized? This is a national institution. In every other state of the federation, they have a well-defined leadership structure. But in Imo, it does seem that the NRC, there is a, there is a faction 
that is supporting the governor and there is a faction that is loyal to the national leadership. How come he was the only state that has that unfortunate uh, picture? My, my dear brother, thank you for that question. You see, let me tell you, that is culture of Algeria. He has a heritage of the wishingness. You know, in his quest to become NFC president, he divided the, the same NFC he's presiding over, over today. He split NFC into two because he couldn't get his way. He couldn't get his way. He had to divide the So he's a divisive figure by his nature. Now, why he did this one, he also cost it. NFC was supposed to hold the election uh, earlier this year. The, the election, there were two people contesting. One of them called Draft of Fable is his case man. The other one, everyone who was the acting uh, uh, chairman of NLC then. But Joe Aguero wanted his case man at all costs. And he didn't pretend about it. He did very unprintable uh, things and very draconian and undemocratic things to ensure that he imposed that uh, um, uh, George of Fable. And these other people said, no, this is not how elections are done. This, the, the procedure must be followed. He insisted. And so there was a statement, the election could be hold. That same day, he announced that uh, George of Fable, his kinsman, as a caretaker committee of the NLC. Two people are contesting something. It was inconclusive, it didn't hold. He announced one of the contests. Have you not declared the result? And the people said, no, we will not, we will not accept this. And moreover, they didn't follow the procedure. You know? The NLC was not dissolved. I mean, the liquidity was not dissolved as their constitution demands. So it, it automatically factionalized it, factionalized it, and then they Because that's what he wants. Uh, he wants, uh, he wants uh, somebody uh, who uh, he will uh, put uh, and will be dictating to him whatever uh, tell you to say that governor is, that is what he's doing. Say he's going salary, he's saying yes, sir. I will say whether he's going or not. So that's why it is peculiar to him, because he's from Imo. He has a political agenda. That's why he factionalized the NSC in Imo State. Uh, Honorable Commissioner, just uh, to sign off now, was it true that when that election was taking place at the NS NRC State Secretariat in Imo, that the place was attacked by hoodlums and, and uh, the place was vandalized? Was it true? It cannot, it is, it is absolute falsehood. Those who were uh, at the election venue, the NSC people, came out and said that what, clearly what, no, there was no attack. There was disagreement between them because uh, of the high-handedness of uh, the um, Ajero trying to have his at all costs. They disagreed. And police, they seen their could be class, came and disbanded them. They even the returning officer he brought there, admitted there was no problem. So the letter went to start fabricating attack, attack. What is the business of uh, government with the election of NLC? So there was no attack. Certainly, to the best of the records we have. That's, that, that, that's a very good place to leave it. Uh, we wish you all the best, you and your team, all the best on Saturday. Looking forward to engaging with you after the elections. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We'll go on a short break now. When we're back.